set? Very wonderful. Okay, it's 6.02. We're going to call tonight's meeting to order. This is the regular select board meeting and welcome all guests who are here or virtually. Bradtown is not able to be here tonight. Joe Staub is on my left. Carolyn Weasel and Tor Nelson are with us for tonight's board meeting. Is there any additions to her to tonight's meeting? Yes, I would like to add a municipal fireworks display permit. And anything coming off tonight's agenda that you're aware of? Uh, no. Okay. Any public comment from folks that are here this evening? Anyone wish to speak? Hearing none, we'll move forward. And next on the agenda is a purchase and sales agreement for one and a nope. half. No, the right one. No. Those are minutes. minutes. Oh, I apologize. Okay, where uh, if I can get a copy of tonight's agenda, that would be great. Let me just see if it's here. You can comment on the topics as they arise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure, you all have things to say, or you wouldn't be here. <laughs> it's that bad when people from Longstown. No, it's actually from Portland Leather. I do have one do from the Portland Leather. Yeah. Okay. It's speed up. I take it on my on the plane with me when I travel. We're going to pull up tonight's agenda on the phone, and I'll be right with everyone. Oh, I have I it here. Have you want to? You want to look at my computer? That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. I came straight from work tonight, so I didn't have a packet of email. Thank you so much. So, for the next item on the agenda is the Hill Street Extension mowing concerns, and thank you, Carla. You're welcome. So we'll open the floor for that topic. Anything you'd like to add regarding that to it? Um, no, Jonathan, I think we'll start off with you then. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy, I'm happy to start. We had sent um, some pictures about, I mean, the agenda says mowing, so I just want to be clear that there was mowing done, I don't know, a month or so ago, but that isn't really the concern. The concern was what came after the mowing, which was um, tree removal, shrub removal, vegetation removal that came later. And we did submit a bunch of pictures. I just sent them in this afternoon. So I did might, see those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't help them. And I guess, I guess the first thing I would say is that to the extent that the board has had the opportunity to drive down the road and actually look, because as pictures are, pictures don't necessarily capture right the whole impact necessarily so I would encourage the board to go and actually drive on the road and look and see um, there are many in the room here that have lived here longer than we have but we've been here 17 years and we've never seen um, clearing other people use other words so I'll avoid some of those words but Clearly, I don't think that what was done would be considered standard forestry practice or good practice as, as relates to treatment of trees. We just had another huge downpour briefly this afternoon. My, my 
input would be we need more vegetation. Yes, there has to be sufficient clearing so people can drive safely, so the trucks can operate, so the plows can operate, so they can see, so they're not busting equipment. I get all that, but a lot of what was done would be well beyond where a mirror would be. Um, so I think that, I, I just think it was very indiscriminate, haphazard in a lot of ways, and destructive in a lot of ways. Was that contracting? So. That's a good question. I am not certain if it was through the contractor. Can you speak to that? Tour? I'm not sure if anyone can hear on the other end, but there's no audio or video coming from the meeting. Oh, thank you can for you letting us know. That? Can you click that button? How do I do that? I just oh, use the mouse on that boot button. That was Matt, Matt Romeo letting us know. Can you hear us now, Matt? Uh, no, it looks like, are you muted? muted. Oh, his mic is off. But I can't. No. Do we have them muted or? No. You're, uh, looks like you're muted. It's not from the. No, it's muted up there. Yeah. How do I do that? No, he has to. Do I do something or do they do it? Where you have to do it. <laughs> there you go. Swing left. There you go. Can you hear Is that better, Matthew? Got you now. All right. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. And thank you, Carla. <laughs> So Sue was just asking if it was done via a contractor, and I can't speak to that. Can you, Tim? No, it is not a contractor? Okay. It is here through the town that the work was done. Um, and I've made notes of your concerns as well. Are there other people here tonight that want to speak to it as well? If not, I'll ask Tim if he wants to speak to it. He did at my house was they cut tree well they didn't cut they butchered them but they were down below the bank and these limbs had didn't get anywhere near the road and they were just i mean it was like they went through willy-nilly at least through my yard the neighbor's yards and like a tom wolf i don't know if you're familiar where tom lives but there were pine trees there are pine trees right up right next to the interstate and they cut branches that were like the roads over here they cut branches over here pointing out in this direction plus they cut trees that were right up against the interstate and and i mean it's a mess what they did and the trees against the interstate it's like whose property is it? is that the federal right-of-way or is that the town right-of-way is that the interstates or is that the towns plus like along where I live, there's a rock wall that goes along the whole property. And they cut the trees. What they cut was holding the rock wall in place, which is holding the road up. And the rock wall's been there for over 150 years. But it's like at my house, they showed zero consideration for anything. They just went in, they cut. It was, it was, I mean, I, I can't even say what it looks like. And now I have to clean it up, which I don't think is fair. You know, I mean, and they, they cut down butternut trees were maybe this tall that were down 10 feet below the grade of the road. And they just cut them up for no reason. So now I have to clean all that up. And, and I'm not happy about it, as you can imagine. And I spent the last 15 or 20 years cleaning all the brush out along my property, only to have them come along. And, and now I got to start all over again. And I'm not happy, you know, and people on front page forum have replied saying that you know they did the same thing to them <clears throat> and it's just like there was no consideration given to us at all it was just like we're just going to come in and do it and that's just the way it is can i ask sir where you live i'm not familiar yeah 1061 hill street yeah okay thank you i haven't been familiar with what was posted on front page forum i did see the pictures for the first time today right and I really appreciate you voicing your concerns. Yeah, I mean, I got pictures it. also. I mean, everybody's got pictures. 
And now that the brush has dried out, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see really how bad the brush is. And, and all it's gonna take is somebody flipping a cigarette butt out the window, and now you got a brush fire. But I mean, if anything, they should come up and try to, and, and clean up the mess, mm -hmm. at least. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. And Mia? Becky Goddard. <clears throat> so Becky. my question is, um, what was the reason it was done? And who ordered it? And um, lastly, how can it be mitigated? What, what can they do to repair the damage that has been done? Okay. I've made a note of that, Becky, and I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Tim. There's somebody behind you, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I wanted to speak. Um, I live in West Elm, West Berlin, and... I'm not as upset as most of you guys because I understand that it's if you look at it holistically it is ugly I'll grant you that and I'm going to just clean up but but I'm not here to to jump around with my ass on fire about it um, you I'm just speaking for myself yeah so so I understand that it's a highly efficient way of cleaning the side of the road right and there are sections of it which you'll notice that are done really well and then there's sections of it that are done very poorly, and I think most of you are upset about the very poorly ones. Um, I don't, if we were to cost out what it would take to have a crew and a chipper and everything else, I think the reason we're doing this as a town and is because it's an efficient way. It's one, one piece of equipment, I don't know if we own it, but they're generally $150,000 probably for that, and then an operator makes $50,000 a year and they spend two weeks on the hill. So it's, it's a very efficient way of doing it. I don't know what, this type of deforestation occurs all the time, maybe not on the side of the road, but in the forestry community, this is something that goes on. They call it this grinder that's on the end there. So this is not a new thing for land clearing. Um, I don't know what kind of, I, this, I know that they did it on the Norwich Ski Hill to reopen up things, and it was done really well. So I think there's a way of having this and doing it well, and I don't know if it's operator training, I don't know if there's a certain size of tree that's not acceptable to try to grind, because a lot of them are split and they look floral, right? And to me, that just looks like some media little torture thing, right? So I'm like, I don't want to go outside of the road on my bike, but I'm not going to get hysterical about it. But but I will, I will happily clean up my own lawn. I understand people aren't, but I think what we need to know is what what can be done post to mitigate, what could have been done not to, maybe there was better operation techniques, not necessarily what you choose to cut, but more say that, that maybe there's a way of applying that tool in a way that doesn't look like it does, right? Um, so, so I understand the money savings, I understand the practice of doing it, I don't know if there was a, a training seminar that was going on with that particular tool, um, are they cutting and I don't want to. I don't want to belittle my town workers either, because I value them, and I don't want to belittle anybody else who has concerns. Um, but I know why they did what they did. But I'm wondering if there's a better way of doing it, because we own the tool. It's probably this type of deforestation award is probably not going to cease. But I think if it was done a lot cleaner and a lot better, and does that mean hiring somebody with a saw to come through and stump the spikes? So if you just take a, a brush blade with a blade and you cut the small stuff off so it doesn't look as bad, or you had a chipper, I mean, that increases man hours and time. And I know it's a town of money, taxpayer efficiency issue. So, so I'm on the town side, because I think some of it looks pretty terrible. But I'm also, I mean, on the, the citizen side, right? Because I have to spend time and I have to clean it up, but I also appreciate the people we hire to do the work, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to come here and dig into these people, the, the staff and the workers, and I don't want to dismiss any of the concerns of the citizens. But I think this is, this, we as a group have to learn how to prevent, correct, and go forward, on top of just being inflamed. Mm -hmm. So that's my take. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think that's a really great way of putting it, because I too, like you. Um, wholeheartedly understand that our staff works mm -hmm. really hard yep. and wants to do good. And so I think it's good that we're having this conversation, being open, bringing it forward. And I want to definitely, unless there's anyone else that wants to share, I'd like to turn it over for Tim so that he can also share. I'd like to say one thing. Okay, sure. I used to work here as a road crew member back when Gary Richardson was here. 
And uh, we used to actually have to go out with chainsaws and do the trimming on the sides of the road. And uh, we didn't have a chipper. We had to haul everything to the stump dump. And uh, the efficiency was not there. Uh, the cost effectiveness wasn't there. We could only do a couple roads a year. Mm -hmm. Now with the high tech technology that these guys are using, they can get all of our roads done. It makes them safer, it keeps them cleaner. Uh, you pull out of your driveway, if you've got a big tree, a bunch of brush sitting there, you can't see if anybody's coming. Mm -hmm. I understand the concept of deforestation and all that, but you gotta keep the roads cut back, otherwise they're gonna keep brushing in and it's gonna get worse and worse and worse. Eventually all that stuff gets in the ditches and they can't keep the ditches clean. Then we lose our culverts, we lose our roads. So the efficiency of this machine that they're using to do this work saves time and money. Um, it saves the manpower. Uh, one guy can go out with a tractor and do this basically by himself. Um, maybe it is just a learning curve for their training. Um, but I, I, I wholeheartedly are standing behind these guys because they have a lot of work to do. They've been through a lot of work in these last two years with all the flooding we've been having. So anytime they can have a tool and a machine that's more efficient or more time saving for them so that they can get back to working on the roads, mm -hmm. I, I totally applaud what they're trying to do. <coughs> I appreciate the, the public's um, being upset that the, it looks like it's shredded and destroyed, but that's the tool that they're using. Maybe they just need to get a different tool that's more compound and it, it takes everything and it mulches it better because eventually that mulch will lay down and it, it'll bring up more more stuff and it'll vegetation will grow right back. Within three to four months, all that stuff, you won't even see it. The trains, Amtrak, all them, they use it all the time on the train tracks. Uh, it's just a matter of if it's a dogwood tree that's three inches or above, it's gonna shred it. It's not gonna mulch it like it's supposed to. So I just, I don't wanna see these guys get yelled at or get upset over something that they're trying to do to keep us safe. Points well taken, and thanks for sharing. And Tim, would you like to speak? Is there anything that you would I would ask like the board if anyone has any questions or concerns or things that you'd like Tim to speak to, or we can certainly do that. Tim, is this the first time that we've used it? Yep. It's the first time that this machine's ever been used in this time. Yeah, anything like it. Um, using modern technology, it doesn't look the prettiest. We are going behind with pole saw and cutting the nubs down. And like as far as the stumps go when they're fractured, it creates regrowth off the stumps. Yeah, some of them are still a little high, but when we get time, I mean there's only four of us, when we get time, they're gonna go back around. They're gonna cut all the stumps down. Hill Street's going to get ditched at some point when we have time. Like we're on West Hill now. Um, you can, I mean, they're going right behind the machine with another excavator. Yeah, some of it is absolutely great. Ditching it all. Like with a pole saw, they're cutting all the nubs down, they're cutting all the stumps off flush so it looks just like it was as if it was cut brush. Except for there's a few, I mean, there's still some sparks of the tree that are laid on the ground where they can't reach with the excavator. But the fracture of the stump doesn't regrow the stump. It has to generate brush from somewhere else. So it slows the growth of the brush on the side of the road. It also helps us not smash our $170,000 excavator through the brush, ripping hoses off, bending lines, doing that. Um, and like, as far as like efficiency, I reached out, I talked to our tree warden. He suggested that I reach out to some tree service companies ask them how they figure it out as far as pay and what it would cost and everything else and it's roughly about two dollars a foot and so at five thousand feet that's a little short of a mile that's twelve thousand five hundred dollars yeah, if we were to hire it to we, and that is two crews two brush traps two chippers and probably four four man crews they said so about eight people so that and so that's about twelve thousand five hundred a mile. We've rented this machine for a month for ninety five hundred, and we've done a little over two miles worth of road already in just a little over two weeks. So 
this is helpful you sharing and it shows the good intents and how busy you are as well yeah you know, there's, I think there's over 60 miles of road in this town and you you can condense like the, and even on hill street the brush is out into the road we're oh breaking, yeah it's, we're breaking it's, it's, mirrors. Key, yeah. it's beautiful but it's impractical the plows hit it we're breaking yeah. mirrors off the trucks we're ripping antennas off we're ripping, i mean mirrors are 900 dollars a piece and that's the old style. Some of the newer trucks have the newer style. They're over a thousand dollars. I have a question. So, so there are trees that this cannot touch. You can see there's hemlocks, and there's there's trees that are clearly almost in the ditch and over the road. So, when they're this big, what is the attempt of town to go get them, or is that just another budget, another line item to figure out? Because it's definitely something that will need to yeah. be discussed. And as far as what the bigger trees? Yeah, because I mean, right up by my house, they're they're right to the road. Yeah, so, I mean, up on West Hill, there's, I mean, that machine usually will do, depending on what the species of tree it is, will take four to five inch trees. And it's also depending on where it is. Like, if there's a lot of rock and, and, and debris on the ground, we can't run that head close to the ground because it's going to smash all the teeth on it and it's going to be absolutely useless. And then we're going to pay a damage fee. Mm -hmm. For it. So that's why they're going behind with hand saws and trimming stuff back and doing it that way so we don't get, I mean, there's places where you can get right to the ground and it, and it mulches it right up to nothing. Mm -hmm. But the bigger trees, some of them are left. I mean, the intention is, is if they're in the right of way and they're leaned over the road, is they're going to go back with a hand saw, cut them down, mm -hmm. unless they're, I mean, mm -hmm. unless they're stand back up from the, I mean everything grows to the center of the road because that's where it's reaching for sunlight. And you it's said you're on West out. Hill now? We're on West Hill now. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what road will be after West Hill if you had to say? Bob well, Morrell mm -hmm. Hill. Okay. And but also and then to add to that is is the efficiency but the safety aspect of it. I mean logging chainsaw work is probably one of the most dangerous occupations there is out there Spot on. we had an employee that was out all last winter that was hurt from cutting brush in the spring of 2023 he ended up falling off the bank ruptured his rotator cuff and had to go out so we ended up running almost a year's worth of workman's comp for an injury for trying to cut brush and you I mean a lot of it is on steep slopes okay. and then just again the sheer fact of there's only four of us and we can't cut enough brush in the summertime to even come to the maintenance of this. And then the, the whole point of this is to thin the brush on the side of the road to the bigger trees, get it more manageable, and then once it comes back as grass, mow it with a roadside mower. But there's a lot of work between that point and this point. Another thing that I'm thinking is we could most likely with your coordination with TOUR, we could have a list on the website that people could refer to, residents and so forth, to know where they are at any given point, given that they're on West Hill now and then they'll be going to Rowell, so that all residents will know about the approximate time that you'll reach their area. But I think that's wonderful what you said, that your, your staff is going in after and doing everything you possibly can. It's, it's the staffing issue, having enough time, and all the other things you're trying to do too, and do it safely. So I think you said it very well, and I appreciate each of you speaking, and all you folks that are here, everyone. And I want to make sure that anyone else that wants to speak to the issue can. So if there's anyone else, and Joe? What's a right away, the town right away? 24 True. and a half feet. 24 and a half? Give or take, like some, like, not all right away is, I mean, some are greater. Okay. 24 foot is the low end of it. 33 feet could be the widest. That's right. from the center of the So it's road. not it's from, all, it's, it's not all a two rod road. Three. Three. Yeah. It's three across the entire. Three right. from the center. Three from center. That's the, t that's the state, that's the typical, right? Yeah. So it's, it can vary from 24 to over 30 feet from the center of the travel portion of the highway. I'd also we like run on the, I mean, we run to the short, I mean, we don't have any machines that will reach outside of the 24 foot. Okay, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're just, no. I mean, that machine that we have, 
has a reach of is the cutting going to help 10 feet take care of the roads in the winter yeah, yeah. tim says yes how so uh, the and brush will be out of our way and we can actually maintain the side of the road we can ditch the side of the road push the snow banks push back, snow banks back mm -hmm. and then we're not scarring trees either how do you ditch the side of the road when all the the trees that you cut down are laying there how we ditch it we're going to pick it all up with the excavator we're going to take it all out so all that that you cut down is going to be coming out a good majority of it but we can't remove any stone walls or anything no like i know that. but all the stuff that you that has been cut down so you're saying that's going to be pulled out cleaned up most of it yes so when does that happen like when we get time when we they're ditching right up my hill now they're going right behind them with the ditching okay and and i have one more question so i'm gathering that the main reason that for doing this was so the mirrors wouldn't be knocked off them. That's one of the biggest reasons. No, so okay. visibility and traffic safety is the, is the largest aspect of it. Yeah, I live mm -hmm. on Hill Street and I've, I've noticed a drastic improvement of being able to, we have a lot of walkers, uh, a lot of recreational people on the road every day. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah. pulling out of my driveway personally, my, you know, we can see a lot better. And coming up and down the road, I see wildlife <coughs> quicker. Um, it's, it's definitely an improvement. I know there's areas that are, you know, some people aren't happy with, but I'm sure that there can, you know, there can be a compromise somewhere. Um, you know, it's, but I, I definitely, it's been a long time here. So. Thank you. Is it a particular type of terrain where it looks bad? And I'm just trying to understand. I, and I will drive down the road. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> um, but Same. <laughs> but is that why? Mainly where something? there's, I mean, it looks a little worse where there's debris on the oh, ground, rocks, bigger stumps. Stuff that so those areas where it's harder for can't, the machine. We can't get yeah. close to the ground with. Yeah. yeah. I've been on it twice. You have any additions you'd like to share? No, I think he, he described it quite well. I agree. As far as, uh, you know, any of the, the rocks or other debris that doesn't allow you to come down, down. to the roadway or down to the, the bank or shoulder, um, yeah, you're leaving that debris. And it, does it look like heck? Yes, it does. But it opens up the road. It allows the road to dry out. Um, it, it'll keep some of that overburden from reaching into the, into the road. Um, I understand the benefit from it. You know, road road can, road maintenance is not just the, the the gravel and the grading. It's the shoulders and the ditching, and it's the roadside mowing and the brush and trees. You know, you got to maintain, and it's a little hard to go. When you, we haven't done well in maintaining, maybe, um, to go back and take that out, of course it, it's going to jump out and it's yeah. look like heck at times. I want to let everyone know that we as a board will take everything into consideration that's been discussed on this topic tonight. And I also want to open it up for if anyone wants to express a um, recommendation in terms of if something is outside of what we've discussed tonight, that you'd like to suggest, you know, we'd be open to that as well. But I think Tim uh, expressed <laughs> things really well that they have good intentions, and the fact that what they've done has a lot to do with the site visibility and the safety aspects. And I certainly understand your concerns and appreciate you all expressing them. And like I said, as a board, we will, you know, look at this more fully um, and just appreciate everyone's time. Yes, sir. I would have been fine with it, all right, but it was, the thing that just irritates me is, is the trees look like what's left, looks like a tornado went through. They're all splintered. Now, I would have been fine if they were chopped down, you know, down to the ground, you know, and the brush, they, and they did something with the brush, so it doesn't look as bad as it looks. Yeah, you know, and the other thing that, you know, that I'm not happy about was there was trees cut that were down the bank. That, and I know for a fact these branches were not over the road, but they were just cut. You know, and I've spent better part of 25 years trying to make sure that my property was kind of hidden away from the road where you couldn't see in for privacy. Now it's like there's a big arrow pointing at my barn, and I got enough problems with people trespassing to take pictures, you know, in the fall and in the winter. Now it's just blatantly right out there where before it was somewhat hidden. No, Tim, I mean, I'm not ragging on you about it. It's just that, I didn't you know, say anything. no, I mean, it's, it's like if it was done more methodical and, and it was like, you know, cleaned up. Well, and we are. Are you going to come up and clean? I just explained that, that we are going behind this machine 
and cleaning it up, but we cannot be. Well, no, I get that. I mean, I actually, well, I, I, was, I saw you guys working it, you know, and I stopped that one day. I think I said something to you about it. No, but it, it's if the trees guys. were, you know, if if they went behind and they cut, and even if they just brushed up the stuff, so it was, you know, so it's just not spread out. Mm -hmm. You know, but I got it spread out all over my yard. I got branches halfway across my yard I have, I've been out picking up. But it was just, if it was more respectful to the homeowner mm -hmm. and the property owner, that would have been, you know, made a world of difference. Not, you know, you come home and, whoa, what happened? And I mean, that's where it's wonderful that you came tonight so you could voice those concerns. Yeah, I mean, if we had a heads up that this was going to happen, oh, that would have been say, one thing. Perhaps, yeah, uh, communication is here too. Mm -hmm. Might not have solved all the problems, but at least you would have done Well, no, I mean, I, I'm fine. I mean, I was fine with the cutting. It was just the execution and the way it was left. I agree. That's mm -hmm. what just, you know, that's a thorn in my side. And it seemed a little indiscriminate because, for instance, he cut a tiny little aspen on the side of the road, which was in the, in the right of way, which he had the right to do that. But a tiny little aspen, but yet I've seen three or four completely huge dead trees that aren't taken down that could easily fall on a car. So I'm just well, we don't understand take, that. We can't take them can't down take at the same them. time. Like the machine if that, if if the, so that dead tree is a very volatile tree. Like that could kill somebody. Right, but it's then, still there. So yeah, I don't understand. I'm worried about the three guys that work for me. Uh -huh. I'm not going to kill one of them on the roadside. We'll have to hire somebody if it's that bad of a tree. To so your machine that you had truck. can't take those trees down because they no. took other trees no, down. No, too down. dangerous. Like if it's a large dangerous. dead tree, it'll blow apart mm -hmm. and it's just going to rain down on anything and smash that machine okay. and then we're going to be liable All right. so that's to something replace that, anything. That has to be done separately. Separately. Right? Okay. Like some trees don't have a good hinge and they're just so dangerous mm -hmm. for anyone to do. Um, so I understand that's the that whole, aspect. I mean, that's the whole safety aspect of this machine. Right. If somebody's in the cab, it's enclosed, it's caged. Like, Got it. Like, Didn't you can't just that. cut into that's a dead tree question. with that because it'll blow or, apart. Mm -hmm. But he also can't just take every dead tree that's up there because he has his right away that he has to, he has to remain in the town right away with what he's taken. And there's a number of dead trees that are up there that are on private property. Mm -hmm. And he can't he can't take the dead trees on private property. He Obviously, can't take what's within the town right away. Mm -hmm. What he's doing is one of the most efficient ways to maintain the safety of our highways. Uh, it's a very efficient way because he can go through oh. and, and cut the brush. He can cut the brush. He can cut the limbs that are overhanging and hitting the school buses. He can cut branches that are going to come down in heavy snow. It is a very efficient and effective manner, and it's safer as crew. They're in the cab. They do come back afterwards. I understand they come back afterwards with a pole saw to clean up some of the limbs that look ugly and are shattered. And it's trees. It's brush. It will grow back up. The brush will grow up. The ferns will grow up in no time. In a, in a couple months' time, there will be new leaves out. It's a very efficient and effective manner of what he's doing, and it's cost-effective to the town of Portland. Yeah, so maybe if we just been notified that there was going to be another cleanup crew later, because this is the first I've heard of that, so. I, I'm in belief that we will put that on the website as well as a schedule, and I want to commend the staff for the work because I know it is not easy, it's time consuming, it's hard work, and I know they've been working with a short staff too, and I truly appreciate everyone's views tonight, and they are taken seriously so thank you all could i just make one more quick point yeah. and that is that um i mean efficiency you got to be careful with that word because it's efficient to take a gallon of gas and throw it on the grass and burn a bunch of grass down it works great and it's cheap so we got to be careful with how all this thinking about yes money's tight for the town for the taxpayers for everybody generally um, but I would just caution about it's good because it's efficient. Not everything that's, that is done because it's efficient necessarily is good in the long run. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is about as we are getting more rains, more heavy rains, more flooding, I would just suggest that the town really, as they do their maintenance of roads and roadways and everything else, that they're very mindful of that. Again, just clearing places out and taking out vegetation <clears throat> heavily 
might actually have a negative impact when it comes to runoff and accelerating the flow of water. Opening up roads so they can dry, that's great. The problem is if you get four inches of rain with a fully open road and you don't have enough um, vegetation to mitigate that water, it could be creating a serious problem. So there is a balance. There is, there is a balance. There is a compromise that has to be made. That's all I would say about that because I think it's important to keep that in mind as well. We're, I'd just like to add that we are following our five-year plan that we have through the state that is monitored every year for this. And West Hill and a few of these other roads are in the red and they are to be ditched and cleared back. I mean, I spent a week with the state going through the road. And that's why some of these projects are being done is because we are not compliant with our runoff permits. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we grass ditches back in for. We mulch, we seed, we stone line where necessary. It is all to prevent all of this. There is a plan and a policy that we follow through our five-year policy mm -hmm. or permit problem, permit through the state. And tour, do we have that five-year plan on our website? And if not, can I don't we? Think so. I think that might be wise to <coughs> to our website as well. And I think that's great that you expressed it, that that's what you're following, so that everyone knows. And I think you are sorry to drag this one out. No, it's okay. Please do so that what you wish. One thing is, since we don't like the way the trees are being ground up, and this is our land, right? Mm -hmm. And we are this. We we grouse about our property rights, like, but yet we're not. This is devil's advocate, and some of you may not want to hear this. But what if you knew that you had to maintain your property against the road and cut your own trees? Mm -hmm. What if you took responsibility for the trees that were in the public right away and cut them the way you wanted them? Well, you would get what you wanted, mm -hmm. right? And maybe my lot, I'm lucky because I do that. My 500 feet of footage, frontage, I promise you, they won't cut anything besides uh, grass. The person I work for probably has a half mile and I'll be paid to go clean that up, so I'm very lucky. But if we knew this was coming, and we all knew this was coming, then I would have been a better steward of the client that I work for and be like a steward of my own place. So, so maybe a, someone who can't like physically take the time to cut their own trees the way they want them on their half mile of road frontage, but that's, that's a way of being, uh, how would you say it? Proactive. Proactive, but also independent from what they don't like. So that's, that's another way, like if, if your property was managed the way you wanted it by you, maybe this wouldn't happen. As long as it complies with correct. The, town, correct. the state plan, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then when somebody else does it and you don't like it, here we are sitting around. And, and so. Thank you. We, we did have one section up on West Hill <clears throat> that uh, the people had, it was called their living wall and it was a brush that went around their stone wall all the way around the side of their property, and it was on a corner. And uh, the oh, property owner would come out, and we would actually do that one by hand with uh, trimmers and uh, pole saws because she just liked it as a living wall, and it was a barrier, kept the noise down from the traffic. But um, we did that one by hand every year just because she asked us to. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're having a problem with the section that they got a trimmer cut back, just talk to them. The guys are very willing to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always found them to be very responsive, and you've got a good crew. So we truly appreciate all of the help that Tim, I hate provided. to add to your workload, but do you think you can make, like, I know it would be tentative and it wouldn't be exact, but a list of the order of the roads that you do plan to do? We're almost done. Oh, you are? Month, so. Oh, okay. Does the town have a public information officer? I would think that the notifications to the residents and whatnot that you're asking for would be a, a public information officer. I think the best that's going to happen is it goes on the website and on Front Porch Farm. Not, I don't think individual landowners will, will probably get notified. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe other notices uh, to the newspaper or something of that, that effect as well. But I don't, yeah. if the highway crew, I believe, is stretched thin with the emergency work that they've had to perform with our washouts and, and that sort of stuff. They have a good crew, but they have a limited crew. They have a list of responsibilities and chores that they need to maintain for the safety of all of our town and our travelers, including road grading and 
and, and things keep getting added to the, to the highway crew's list involving safety and involving roads within the town. And with that, I mean, this, this cleanup work that, that they are performing is mostly safety related. Safety related. The, the limbs that get heavy snow load in the wintertime come down and hit windshields, hit the trucks, hit the school buses. The limbs that can break off and come down in wind storms, a lot of this is safety related and it is for the safety of our residents. That has to be, like safety is one of the big things that they are maintaining our roads for. Safety and good intentions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well said. Thank you, everyone. We're going to move on so that we stay uh, according to our agenda tonight. But again, I appreciate everyone, and thank you all for being here, for expressing yourself so that we can look at everything clearly. And we've come up with some ideas that we can put forward as well. So thank you so much. So now we're going to turn to uh, the window dressers presentation. I actually was approached by Mayor the Agency of Transportation, and they are going to present that to us this evening. Hello, Donald. Yes, I'm Donald. Nice to meet you. Hi, hello. Yes. You can sit over here. Should I sit over there? Okay. Yes, please. So Amy Gamble had reached out to me. She's with the Vermont Agency of Transportation. She had expressed some details about the window dresser's presentation. And then Donald was able to get in touch with me as well. And I put them both in contact with Tor Nelson. And that's how tonight came about. Okay. So thank Great. you, Donald, for being here. So you can yeah, thank you for giving us. me some time. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I live in Montpelier. I started working with this project about five years ago. Um, I'm a volunteer coordinator for the, for the program in Central Vermont. It's a program which began uh, in Maine a little over a decade ago. It's a non-profit organization. And basically its goal is to help communities improve weatherization in their homes by building w internal window inserts. So the idea here is to build a fairly cheap option to help people improve uh, the energy efficiency of their windows, in particular, to save money and save uh, on heating fuel. So they look, this is just a little mock version. This is what they look like, okay? So this is something which is obviously a lot more substantial than the sort of the kits that people sometimes put up in the winter with plastic, but not as substantial, but on, you know, a, a lot less expensive than actually putting in a new window into your house. So what we do with this program is we work with communities to um, build these things and put them in their, in their homes. So Amy and I started doing this in Montpelier through the Montpelier, en Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee um, about five years ago. There was, I think, three communities in Vermont doing it at that point. There's now about <coughs> two dozen. Mm -hmm. um, so we have been doing this in Montpelier. We are increasingly getting interest from, I would say, central Vermont as a whole. I mean, we have a measuring team operating in Calais uh, this year. We, we, we have people doing this in Berry. Um, I helped Randolph get up and going two years ago, the Mad River, we helped get up and started. So I'm basically coming here tonight with an invitation <laughs> to Berlin, say, look, if there's interested in being involved in this program, we would love to help bring it to this community. What does that actually mean? Well, I mean, really what we'd be looking for is if there were people in this community that actually wanted to become a measuring team, we need people to, to basically go to people's home and measure the windows to actually um, make sure that these things fit when they yeah. go in. So each of these is specific to the window it goes into. So uh, who, who builds those? Who builds these? The participants themselves. Oh. So yeah, so let me backtrack. Oh, okay. I was also going to ask, how do they express the need that they want the help? So the main way that people um, express the, the desire to have these mm -hmm. is through the Window Dressers website. I mean, local communities, for example, in Montpelier, through Front Porch Forum and other advertising, we, we advertise this to the community and we've had a lot of response. Similar things have happened in, in Barrie. Mm -hmm. um, we have worked with some people in Berlin as well because people through word of mouth hear about this. So yeah. I mean, it's not that we've said no to anyone from this community, but as this has got bigger and bigger, we're really looking for help in terms of being able to widen it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, ideally long term, it'd be wonderful if this community decided it wanted to have its own build um, and have a workshop where people from this community came together and built these inserts. For right now, the invitation I'm sort of bringing to Berlin is that 
uh, the, the build that Amy and I run, which is going to be at the Berry Auditorium, the actual workshop, in November, November 6th to 14th, it's when we're actually going to build these, that um, if there's interest from people in, in Berlin in, in being involved in this, you could piggyback with our build this year. Ideally, what we'll be looking for is a couple of individuals in this community that would actually be willing to measure windows in this community, because we're looking for people in the community to go actually go out and measure windows. But the workshop itself in November, basically what happens is participants and volunteers come, they sign up for shifts at the workshop, a morning or afternoon, and they come along and we basically show them how to build these things. Mm -hmm. And we have all these nifty jigs where you learn to do like one task, like make the frame or wrap plastic around the outside or so forth. And so there's like eight stations and um, as these things move through the stations, you end up with something that looks like this. And these things, as I say, they're, they're made uh, exactly to the measurements of a window. So these just slide into the window well and sit there. Cool. Okay. A couple of other things I just say about these. Uh, according to window dressers themselves, their data suggests that, I mean, this varies a lot depending on the house and the window, but these things typically pay for themselves in two to three years in terms of energy savings. So they do, in most cases, make a big difference. When you do your workshop on the 6th through the 14th of November, is that during the day? Yes, so there's morning shifts, uh, afternoon shifts. We have one or two evening shifts as well. Okay. So the people pay for these? So yeah, so it's a, it's a non-profit organization. So it's not free. So you yeah. do have to pay yeah. for the materials. Yeah. The cost varies depending on the size of the window. I would say a small window is typically about 40 bucks. Um, large windows can be 60 or more bucks. Yeah. Um, we do have grant money, so we try to, well, I mean, we do. We make it much cheaper for people that uh, are on lower yeah, incomes. Yeah. Um, we, in particular, we partner with things like Capstone to target people who are getting yeah. fueling, uh, fuel assistance, mm -hmm. and we try and make it like $5 an insert for them. Um, so we're committed to trying to make sure everybody who wants to do this can do this. Mm -hmm. For people who can pay, yeah. We ask them to do that because yeah. obviously we only have so much grant money Understood. to go around. Mm -hmm. But again, there's a few paid staff, but the vast majority of people, of people working on this project, like myself, are, Volunteer. are volunteers. So it's not a profit enterprise. Hi. How durable is that? <laughs> I mean, I'm so, thinking of storage after, yeah. after the season. Yeah. So, yeah, they're actually fairly strong in terms of pressure on them. The bane of this entire project's existence are, are people's cats, to be perfectly oh. honest. Mm -hmm. Because... Cats, that's the number when we so people sometimes bring these to a workshop a few years after they're made and say I need to rewrap this and I would tell you that more than 50% of the time when we ask them what happened their cat put their so they don't where I talked with someone earlier today actually who's decided not to get them because the reason she needs something for her windows is her cats shredded her her blinds they said if they shredded your blinds they're gonna shred these it's not gonna work for you um, but for most people they work pretty well, and uh, we don't have that many people come back with rewraps. So I would say that people, I mean, I think the, the, the estimate that window dressers suggest is that these typically last about 10 years. And then at that point, they probably need to be rewrapped. That's a great idea. I it is, that. and it's really wonderful you could come tonight to express it. Yeah. I brought it up in our round table at the mm -hmm. last meeting and gave a slight overview, but I knew there was so much mm -hmm. detail sure. to what you do. Yep. So that's why I was so appreciative that you could come and explain that. So, so I, I can will leave. be in Kentucky uh, through that time period when you're doing the workshop mm -hmm. by myself, so I wouldn't be able to attend, mm -hmm. and I work full time. But as a board, we can discuss it and okay. determine Great. if that's something we want to be involved with here in Berlin. Yeah, but I think we see the value in it for sure. Yeah, yeah well, as I say, the first stage, if you, if you wanted to get involved, would be to suggest a measuring team, two people. Yeah. Okay, and true. we would mentor you through the process of doing this. And then, you know, as I say, like Land Randolph two years ago, I did this, and then they have their own build now, so they're, they're doing their own thing. How many towns are involved and have been involved? Uh, How I many think do you have now? Last year, I think there was about two dozen communities in Vermont. Great. They so had their own... Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. And it's gone from, I mean, that's within five years. I think we started five years ago, and there were three, and there's two dozen now. Well, the cost of fuel now is definitely a good idea. Yeah. Yes, nothing is going down. Yeah. Everything's increasing. Well, we're finding a big demand, I think, because people are finding that it does actually save them quite a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, doing this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Can I leave you some yes. leaflets? Yes, so for, if anyone's interested, I just have some, mm -hmm. it just has uh, some contact details to follow up. 
Um, but yeah, thank That's you for great. your time. Thank you, you so table. much. Okay. okay. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Okay, thank Say you. Say hi to Amy. Cool, well, thanks. Very nice. We'll save one yeah, for Brad, too. I like that. Good yeah, very nice. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we're right on schedule, pretty much. We're going to move on now to the Police Department K-9 proposal. Let me just grab the officer who's going to give that presentation. Thank you, Chief. Do one of these for Brad if he comes mm -hmm. in, you can give it to him. That'd be great. That was nice. Oh. That's not what I expected. I didn't realize <laughs> that it was already in two dozen She's communities. No, that's a great I thought idea. it was rather new and not having been done for five years. No, I just didn't. I didn't know what it was, but I, yeah. Hi. This is a uh, good evening, Senior Officer Fosberg. Thank you for being here with us. Absolutely. So, so we're going to open it up for sure. discussion on okay. the K-9 proposal. Sure. Uh, I'll just introduce, so as, as, like I said, this is Officer Vosberg. Um, he came to me a while back with some interest in starting a K-9 program here, so I kind of let him run with that project and asked him if he would be willing to give a presentation just of what his thoughts were, um, about what this would look like. Um, so here he is. Welcome. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm going to make this kind of as brief as I can for you guys. Um, I kind of want to start off with um, how K-9 program will assist the Berlin Police Department. Mm -hmm. um, K-9s canine, are usually used in like tracking um, people. Um, this can help with missing people. Um, missing person calls usually for us tend to turn into a high visibility call. Absolutely. I mean, it's a huge thing. And waiting for support from other agencies can that can take valuable time that we have in trying to find this person and we lose all that time, or it, be it on a fresh track or anything like that. Um, if we were to have a local resource for that, it would save a lot of time. Um, also, this is kind of kind of out there, but it is a possibility with fleeing, subs, fleeing suspects. Um, if, say, it's, it's almost an officer safety issue, um, if we have a fleeing suspect and they're armed, having a dog is less it's, it's still a catastrophe but it's less of a catastrophe than an officer getting seriously hurt or possibly killed um, but the big one at least lately around here has been the drugs in the area um, the drugs are making a really large comeback in Washington County um, there's been a numerous fatal overdoses reports of drug dealing everywhere throughout the area um, a canine can assist with that as they're trained to locate these narcotics um, in vehicles residences sometimes even on people um, and so, for instance, utilizing a canine on traffic stops, it makes it easier for those involved, makes it safer, and it's honestly a really essential tool in locating these drugs that drug dealers are trafficking back and forth throughout the county. Um, how it works is a canine will search the airspace around the vehicle. Um, they, we, we don't necessarily need a warrant for that. I was just going to um, ask that because I mm -hmm. can't remember and, from law school. <laughs> yeah, and if it alerts, that kind of leads us on that track. Um, so, I mean, so if it, if it alerts, can you can you search? You can search right now. So right? we can. No? Sorry, no, sorry. Uh, adding not to get too technical, no, but and <laughs> just to not take away from Officer Bosberg's presentation, but I was a canine handler for a number of years um, in Bear City. Um, Vermont's unique in that a canine alert is reasonable suspicion in many states. That gives the officer the authority to search the vehicle. Not so yeah, much yeah, here, but, that. Yeah. Uh, but that starts leaving, kind of giving us the foundation yeah. to apply yeah. for a warrant. Yeah. You gotcha. to say that a dog, you know, yeah. alerted on that. Mm -hmm. Other observations. That was, that's what I was just going to say. If it alerts, it assists us yeah. in getting the warrant process. Mm -hmm. um, so, like overall, I mean, benefits: increased officer safety. Um, canines can be deployed in potential life-threatening situations. They make it easier, not easier, but safer for the officer. Mm -hmm. Again, it's still a big deal, but unfortunately. I hate to say it like this, but the canines use as a tool rather yeah. than have yeah. an officer get shot, get seriously injured, what have you. Um, increased chances on locating missing um, missing people, um, vulnerable people, children, vulnerable adults, stuff like that. Um, and overall, just community safety. If we're able to get, if we're able to do that quickly, 
to gain support of the community. Uh, if we're able to get the drugs out of here, it's, it's, it's a great tool for that. Um, so that's that was kind of my, my initial. Mm -hmm. I, I might add, and maybe you'll get to it at some other point in your presentation, mm -hmm. but because we have so many commercial businesses in Berlin, if we are frequently called upon to respond to alarms, um, in my experience as a handler, uh, that my canine was absolutely priceless when it came to responding to alarms because his ability to detect someone within a building yeah. is thousands of times better than a human's ability to detect that. Um, and I don't know how many times I would bring him into a building and like right through the door I know something's up because he's already giving me indicators there's somebody in there. Huh. Um, so because we're a little bit limited on actual human bodies um, to respond to things, having that canine as a force multiplier um, and giving us ability to search a large space with much less resources. Um, and it's an often our safety thing, you know, if we enter a building and the dog starts to pick up that there's something going on in there, then maybe we back out and start rethinking a, a better approach to going in that building, call the person out, do whatever yeah. might be tactfully uh, appropriate at, the, at that time. How many years were you a canine handler yourself? Five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was it a program that you established? No, no. So it was already I inherited that dog, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who had already been on the road for a number of years. If as a board we talked and discussed it and it was something that went forward, would you suggest one canine or would you want to start I, with more? Uh, and are there grant programs <laughs> to assist? I was, was, was going to touch on that. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Boy, so you're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the money is a big thing. Um, so. <clears throat> You had me at safety. <laughs> Just so. before I touch on money. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of issues, I, I did a training, an online training, just for like getting this ball rolling. And a lot of depart, uh, issues departments run into is failure for proper planning, which we've done a pretty large amount of, of kind of seeing where this would lead. Um, I mean, I, I've listed out a budget for the next three years. Um, and I've also been like standing in on um, the Chittenden County Canine training that they've been doing. Um, but to the money part, so um, I was able to find a grant. Um, it's put on by the Stanton Foundation. It's out of Massachusetts. Um, they, it's a you don't even apply. You just ask. Hmm. Um, it, it gives you thirty-two thousand um, dollars. Is that one time? One time. There should be more of those. <laughs> so, don't apply. Just ask. I like it. The way. Um, the way I, I set up this mock budget, and actually I have copies if you guys want to take a look. Um, the way I set that up is um, handlers for like handler salary. That's kind of already in the budget um, in regards to besides like overtime and stuff like that. But the overall salary is in the budget. The initial training course is I averaged around fourteen hundred dollars. Um, so just between the canine, which is usually around 8000 because they come already, for yeah. the most part, trained besides for the handler training, mm -hmm. um, that would be a total of $9,400. Um, from there, uh, outfitting mm -hmm. one of our vehicles, the total between the, can the kennel, um, they also have now, they have deployment and heat alert systems, so in the summer it gets really hot. That's a concern for a canine handler. Um, they automatically will pop the door or they'll set off an alarm what have you, so the handler knows. Um, Do you have any vehicles that have, I heard they have pet. We don't have anything currently like yeah. that. Yeah, so just air conditioning stays on. Okay. Just heard about that on the news. Yeah. And then I also threw in, there's a fan for the kennel as well, yeah. plus the AC that gets back there. That's a total of $6,451.98. Um, for gear, just to get it kind of started, it would be around $1,400, $1,359. Um, home living costs, I mean, you probably you'd need it, some bowls, a kennel, and a kennel mat at minimum. I put that at three hundred and twenty-seven dollars and ninety-four cents. So, where I'm getting with that is initial startup for that, just outfitting a cruiser, getting the dog, and everything's right around seventeen thousand five hundred and thirty-nine dollars and ninety-one cents. As a German Shepherd owner, I'm going to tell you that vet care is probably going to be more yeah. than five hundred dollars. Oh yeah, here. well, <laughs> but, we, we've been we've been in contact just, with. Uh, Onion River. Unless they'll give you a deal. We're working that. Okay. <laughs> um, so vet care, food, um, all the annual costs, those are all approximations. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I have I dogs, but I don't, I can't really 
I can't. Um, oh, if you get health see, insurance, it see might that. Be less. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but pretty much where I'm at, roughly around eighteen thousand dollars would be for startup. Well, a little less, but I'm just yeah. going to say eighteen thousand dollars. That leaves fourteen thousand dollars, almost fifty. Well, little fourteen and a half thousand dollars left for annual costs and whatever else comes up. Yeah. Um, the, my, with my math, the first three years of the K-9 program wouldn't even, would be covered. Um, with this grant also, so it, it would be a dual purpose dog, so it would be a patrol dog, which is like the tracking, things like that. And then it would go, um, once you finish that, you'd go to a detection school. Mm -hmm. The town, we would get reimbursed. Um, we get reimbursed for the time spent at that training, which adds another four thousand five hundred dollars. And who who reimburses for that? The the state oh. foundation. Oh wow. Um, the way the process works is, you just apply, and they would be in contact. Really, I would have to send them like a cover letter that we would go over, um, and then they would reach out to the chief, and it would kind of go through there. Is we, there any deadline to apply? Um, no. Okay. Montpelier did this with their last canine. Um, my understanding was really successful. Um, unfortunately, the canine handler wasn't super good fit with that PD and moved on to another department. But the canine program itself was successful and the, the process was successful. So does the dog go with the person if the person leaves? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> it would, I, I think there's some guidelines that we have to go through with the Stan Foundation, but that dog Technically, kind of belongs to the Stan Foundation, so they oh, decide okay. who, where it goes, and oh, okay. I think their preference is for it to stay with the PD. I get it. Yep. And you, you obviously want to be the handler. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's put uh, the most work in it. Yeah. Really, the only one who's expressed any interest in it. Yeah. Um, Tim's got a question. Yeah. If I may, please, please. absolutely. Thank you for taking the initiative, going through the work. I can tell you, you got a lot of papers there. You put some thought <laughs> into this, and we may not give you enough time, but. Um, my question, uh, can the dog do dual purpose? Can it find, you know, silver alert when we lose, mm -hmm. our, as our population's getting older, we're, we're having more silver alerts. Oh, yeah. Can it, can it fi help find the silver mm -hmm. or missing person? Absolutely. And drug detection and help you if there's a criminal with a gun, you know. All of it. Can they do all that? Mm -hmm. My dog did all that. He was a dual purpose dog. Okay, cool. He frequently called upon to do tracks of missing people. Uh, people with dementia who wandered off. Yeah. He and I did a track. It had to have been close to 20 below zero. Somebody wandered wow. off from their home with dementia at like 2 in I the morning. I think the dog for the, the, the missing person is <coughs> huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, on another subject, do we... <coughs> recently somebody was missing, I forget where, and I read where they had the police dogs quickly mm -hmm. and they had police drones. Mm -hmm. Do we have drones? Uh, I'm kind of so getting off into the <laughs> weeds here, but no, my... It's a yes or no. I didn't mean... Yeah, to no, no the drones are an awesome resource, and I have considered them, but because of our proximity to the airport, it really limits our ability to use them. We sure. did have a missing person a couple of years ago who eloped from the hospital um, in the wintertime, and I asked state police for their assistance with their drones, and they said, we can't fly in your area. Oh. Good question. Really? Mm -hmm. Question. <clears throat> Do you have any statistics on, on the the number of times you may have needed one for a missing person? Um, just for us locally? For us locally. Um, I don't have those. I could probably get them for you. Okay. Um, one thing I will say, I was involved with, I mean, I mean we've, we've looked for quite a few people, um, and I think I did the, the actual time, it was in the winter, um, we had a canine, but by the time we got the canine, it was the track had gone. It was pretty cold at that point. Um, if we were able to get one sooner, I don't want to say we would have found one, but it, the the chances probably would have been exponentially different. There's so. been several high-profile people missing, um, not really in good states of mind, that we could have definitely used a, a timely deployment of a canine. Um, we had a gentleman who left his vehicle and went missing and by the time we got a canine out there it was probably several hours eight to ten hours later after the fact and 
it was not a successful track at that point. But had we had our own resources, we might have been able. And unfortunately, we found him deceased. But yeah. um, had we had those resources, could it have been a different outcome? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Matt almost has his hand up. Matt, you have the floor. Hi. Thanks. Um, Personally, I wholeheartedly endorse this. Um, I was um, actually part of Montpelier's application when they did the uh, when they went through the Stanton Foundation. Uh, we were going to do it down at the Capitol, but were not able to. So Montpelier actually got the first dog the Stanton Foundation had ever granted in the state of Vermont. Yeah. It is a single page application, the easiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, is a, a wonderful program uh, built by the guy who founded NBC. And I definitely think that the town of Berlin needs this asset. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. And Joel, you your hand up? Yeah, so going back to maybe looking for outside resources to bring in, do you, do you see this being a resource that might be asked to go out, outside our community? Um, that's frequently, like with our drug recognition expert, he's frequently called upon to assist other agencies. Um, our detective, who's got extensive knowledge in digital forensics, I loan him out a lot because it's just a skill set that a lot of agencies have. Um, and I imagine the same. I mean, certainly within reason, uh, I, don't, I want him to be our resource and not sure. firing him out to everybody. Um, but it's expected a little bit that we share mm -hmm. something like that so mm -hmm. that expertise right. sharing yeah. is tremendous what well, surrounding towns mm -hmm. i mean montpelier mm -hmm. very town has a canine okay state police yeah, yeah i was just yeah. going to touch on that <laughs> they're probably losing their asset so if we were to gain one oh. They, oh. it's kind of well, we're not going to lose it but a few of the guys that I, I know personally aren't continuing yeah so the pool that we can ask from is getting smaller yeah and Barry City, of course, has one, but his, yeah. his dog is getting up there in age, and I don't know how many more years he has it, unfortunately. We got a question over here. I was going to say, I think Mary Ellen also had a question. So, you work a certain schedule. Yes. Which means the dog's available on your schedule. Mm -hmm. So, what about the off time? What do we do? And what, what do we look at when the dog's not available? Is there a second handler, or do you? No, well, no. <laughs> no. If like, you want to approve two dogs, that'd be fantastic. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> he would. There would be some expectation that he would come to mm -hmm. off, even if he was off duty within reason. He, Officer Bosberg was very local, so that's nice. Um, when I was a handler, I would get calls in my off time, mm -hmm. and you know there was an expectation that because I had this privilege, then I would come in mm -hmm. uh, when I could. I'm thrilled that you're bringing it to our attention, Thank and you. I think as a board, it's something that we will look wholeheartedly at to determine about going forward. Um, what Matt said about it being an easy application, mm -hmm. the fact that you're coming to us now, that's wonderful. My mind was also going to, uh, I'll never forget when I was traveling like to Kentucky one time, and I saw the signs for Adopt a Highway. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be very philanthropic mm -hmm. uh, to assist as well. We have such a wonderful community here Absolutely. in Berlin, and everyone wants our community and folks to be safe. Um, so I'm thinking adopt a canine program mm -hmm. as well. And um, so I think as a board, we need to discuss it, yeah. but I'm not opposed to it by no means. I thought it would be way more expensive, uh, uh, frankly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the grant, the yeah. grant is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And there's ways to mitigate other mm -hmm. expenses. I had body armor, which is kind of important for the dog. We have body armor, yep. the dog should have body armor. Mm -hmm. That was donated by a foundation. Uh, yep. First aid kits, like if in the event something happens to the dog, those are often donated items. Um, so there's ways for us to mitigate some yep. of those expenses. And I remember the missing person in Berlin, a situation that you described. Right. And there's been an intense increase in missing persons throughout Vermont recently. Um, and it's just something Elderly that, population. yes, well, just for sure. Two weeks ago, we had somebody who walked off from the Chestnut Place. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, they didn't make it very far before we intervened, but had you know, yeah. circumstances been different. Right. Um, it doesn't always change the outcome, unfortunately, but at least we could tell the public, like, we used all the resources available right. to us. 
because that's been a hard conversation for me to have sometimes. Mm -hmm. People like, what more could you have done? Exactly. And then I'm out there trying to explain myself. Yeah. yeah. Could I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Ah. Uh, so this resource, is this resource limited to use in Berlin, or would you be contacted for mutual aid for other areas as well? Would that also be granted to the top three hours? Um, I would probably want to limit how much, if Pete wasn't on duty and someone called from Montpelier and wanted the dog, we'd have to have a conversation about what that looks like as far as compensation goes. I don't want to burn out our overtime budget because everybody else is asking for our assistance. Montpelier has always been very good about trying to compensate us if they ask for assistance from us. Um, that might be a conversation for me to have with other chiefs, like, hey, I don't mind lending Pete out and the dog out, but we can't sustain that forever. Um, there's got to be some kind of reciprocation. Not only burn out budget wise, but burn out with your hands. Well, I would, if I may, I would imagine when officer, when we have the dog, the handler trained and all that. Yes, he's only on the clock what forty something hours a week, but there will be times when chief says, "Go help Barry City," or "Go help Montpelier," which isn't far away. God forbid we need him, then he can zip up the hill. Right. But I think that when he's on vacation or he's off. When the call comes in, or when we need a dog, right. Montpelier will jump a little faster. Barry City will jump a little faster to lend us there, right? Because we're working to get. I think if we don't have one, they're gonna be like, "You guys are always calling us. Get, get your own dog." And, and that's, that's the a way very it good works. Point, you know, when, yes. when I was on, yeah. if I was away or not on right. duty, and Barry Town had a canine, and something was going on in Central Vermont, obviously we're gonna call the guy who's got the dog already there on duty. Um, but if no one's on, then he's local and he can come. So it benefits the whole area. Very much so. Not and Central money. Vermont is amazing. We're very fortunate. And I think that camaraderie and togetherness and helping each other as a wholehearted community is so important. Good job. Thank Any you. questions you Thank have you. of us? No. Okay. Thank you. We really appreciate, I appreciate you. It. And I'm very much. Soon. I'm available during the day if anyone else. Can think of other questions too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Kudos. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on now to the B Trans Route 12 Trust Bridge replacement and Crosstown Road realignment discussion. Okay, I sent you out uh, in your packet an uh, email from B Trans uh, as part of their uh, Raw 12 bridge uh, replacement uh, was looking for a realignment of you know the cross town road intersection i don't know if you've all had a chance to look <laughs> I at saw that it, but i didn't understand that <laughs> Tim, if you had any thoughts on that or i did a very cursory review of it just because of time limits and such so any additional information will be very beneficial no as far as i mean it's pretty cut and dry they're just going to tee the intersection up a little better so people don't same as Chandler Road and with the Y's, they try to outrun people coming around the corners. It's going to kind of more than force them to stop, stop. the stop sign, slow down, and choose their direction and then proceed from traffic. But it's not going to impact any right away. It's like nobody has to give up any land or it's no. all. No, we're, no, nobody's given pretty you much. You have to get any easements, I guess, is what I, was, what I mean. Pretty much the look of it. You know what I mean? Now, you got Ricker's house on the inside corner where the bridge is. They're just going to kind of pull the road around. I mean, they're already kind of doing it now. Um, with the project that's going there now, they've kind of swung the uphill side up a little bit. They've extended the culvert, trying to <coughs> cut the radius down coming from Northfield to come on. So it's a little easier. It's not tight to the guardrails. The turning is a little easier. And then with the anticipation, I believe, is I mean, it's not that much. We're just kind of going to square the corner up a little bit, I think. I mean, I don't know what the state's got going on with Ricker's house and the bridge. And I mean, there could be some buyouts or whatever there. But if anything, it's going to give Ricker's a, a nicer driveway, I believe, a little easier access to their property. But I don't see no problems with our end, 
Is Ricker the green one? Or yeah, the one that's sitting on the bridge. To help, to help answer the question about easements, the state right away staff will take care of any oh, okay. property negotiations that need to take care of. And then a whole right away section for handling that. <coughs> And they do real well with it too. And I'm so familiarity with that. I'm sure I mean their right of ways are much greater than ours. I mean I don't know exactly what it is down through there, but a lot of it's fifty feet from the center of the road, so mm -hmm. their right of way probably runs right up to pretty much most people's front porch down through there. Mm -hmm. And they're real good about discussing with the residents as Nick said. You know, so that they're aware of yeah. what's transpiring and they have all I mean, those I, discussions and documentation. And so that's going to happen when they replace the bridge. Bridge. Mm -hmm. And that's like two years from now? Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think there's... Three. Three. 28 was the last time that I... 27.8 year was the last I heard of it. They have a few other irons in the fire down through there. There's a bridge on Main Street in Northfield that's due for replacement. That's kind of hinging on a water project, I believe, that's in Northfield. They don't want them both going off at the same time. They've got two bridges on Cops Brook and Lover's Lane mm -hmm. that's kind of working around in there somewhere. So. That, that's Northfield's Lover Lane, not Berlin's. No, Berlin's Lover's Lane. Berlin's Lover's Lane. Berlin's Lover's Lane. I'm sure everything is subject to change at a later date, but I mean, from what I was told was, I mean, they're just going to start Northwood and kind of work their way to the Riverton Bridge through the process. So mm -hmm. keep our fingers crossed and we get over the Wayne Bridge back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as the as far as the intersection at Crossdown, the realignment and stuff, there's there's no problems with us. Okay, good to okay. know. Anyone else have any questions regarding this topic? Okay, hearing none, anything else you want to add to? I'm good. Do we ever take any action or is this just information? I think it's informational. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll move on now to the fire department merger ballot language. And do we have someone from the fire department that will speak to that? Okay. Well, we have. Uh, I think just about everybody on the merger committee here tonight, uh, including Matt online. Um, I guess to start with, if you're on the merger committee, why don't you just stand up and to recognize Pete, Janet, That would be wonderful. Rob, Thank you all for being here. And thanks Nick, for all of your efforts. Flo, yeah. and then uh, Matt Romai online. Uh, appreciate all the... Uh, Work you've done on, done on this for just about a year now, um, working on this. Um, they have come up with um, some proposed uh, ballot language, uh, which on the sheet I'm, I just passed out is the top item there. Um, I ran it by our town attorney, and he proposed a uh, minor change, which is the second one there. So the so the um, language proposed from the committee uh, was shall the town of Berlin form a municipal fire department and absorb the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department into the municipality. Uh, the uh, language from the attorney uh, struck out absorb, absorb and replaced with acquire the assets and liabilities of the, of the fire department. So the, it would reach out the town of Berlin form a municipal fire department and acquire the assets and liabilities of the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department into the municipality. I think that's much better the way it was modified in the second version after speaking with our legal team. Is there anyone here who has any objection? If we were to use the language, shall the town of Berlin form a municipal fire department and acquire the assets and liabilities of the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department into the municipality. Can Any I? concerns anyone have uh, or questions? I just have a question. I haven't sure. heard anything about this for a while, so what is this looking like? What does this mean? Okay. <laughs> 
So, as Tor said, we've been working on this. Process. Right. No, I mean, I was. I remember we had the last conversation, but we were kind of. So the steering committee has <laughs> voted for it. The fire department has voted for it. Okay. I'm not sure where you stand mm -hmm. as a select board. And will there still be a corporation, or is that going away? The corporation will still be there as a corporation, but not in charge of the fire department like it is now. The fire department will become a municipal fire department. Right. The assets will become part of the, the towns. As I say, the private corporation owns all that now. So what does that mean? I mean, what will it do or be? Or, or if you say it's going to continue to exist, what will it serve to do? Maybe the... Oh. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Ryan Barr. I'm the president of the Royal Fire Department. Um, so just to clarify, um, our department made a non-binding vote mm -hmm. uh, in favor. It was a 15 to 1 vote in favor of merging with the town. Um, so I think that shows that we clearly, most of us are in favor of the idea of it. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion, not on base of the fire department, um, is that I'm definitely in favor of it. I think it makes it easier for everyone. My concern with that is that there's no plan in place for how it looks after the fact, touching on that. <laughs> um, whether, like, there's no, I know it, it's it's like uh, putting the cart before the horse in, in like the chicken and egg situation. Um, I think if there was to, have or if the board was to have a plan in place for what it looks like after and whether you follow that or not that's on you guys mm -hmm. um, but I think it would make me and, and perhaps some of the other members um, feel more confident in it I think we all think or have our own reasons why it would work uh, the majority of us at least uh, but we were concerned or my concern is that we don't know how it will look after the fact um, touching on, on that question, um, I believe we all plan in, in, in our head, in our discussions. Um, I think the consensus is that we would still have an association that supports the fire department. For um, fundraising? So for fundraising, for extras like t-shirts, hats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, we, if we want something else, um, that kind of thing. A lot of departments, um, like Northfield has that right now. I don't know if the other ambulance has that right now. Um, where they have an association that does fundraising, does yeah. X, Y, and Z, and then they can buy hats for, for that. Um, so the Berlin Fire Department will still exist as a nonprofit as well as the municipality. Okay. Um, I also, my concern with the wording is that we would need to, I think we should determine like if all of the assets or if we can still retain some for that initial startup uh, because if we were to retain our own nonprofit as an association in support of the municipality, I think we would need something yeah. to get our feet started. Um, and and so, oh. so some of those not at the meetings, there was a certain amount of money left to be with the corporation mm -hmm. to do just what you're asking about. And the other thing is, the real hurdle here is this has to go before the voters. the voters. No, I understand. So before we figure every little detail out, let's see what the town says. And we have it scheduled to go out in the November 5th election, because technically that will probably be a pretty big turnout. And what we were shooting for in the language, which I like this language better, myself included, there's a lot of people in Berlin that don't understand the structure and the format of the fire department. So you don't want to put a question out there on a hotly contested vote already that they look at it and say, what are they talking about? And, I agree. And skip it. So we're trying to make it simple, you know, so they understand. And also, if the town comes back and says, no, we want to keep the, the corporate structure, that's probably what's going to happen. So before we get too far, I think we need it to determine, do we, we both sort of agree, meaning the steering committee, the, um, the select board, and the uh, corporation. I thought there was a binding vote that was nine to six. Is that, is that true? Or? There, there was a binding vote. So we, we had two votes that night. The, the first was a non-binding. The second was a binding. 
and was dependent on, you know, the November election. But I agree with Ron. Oh, we, we want to determine what they are going to become. They want to determine what they're going to become. We, yeah. We're starting to need to, to, to be okay from the town. I, I completely to, agree with that. I, I think the difficult thing so. can be that if if people don't understand what's going to happen afterwards, they might be hesitant. I mean, I know that a lot of town. I didn't know that the fire department wasn't <laughs> part of the town, you know, before I before I got here. But so I guess my concern is is if there's if there's too much ambiguity about what's happening afterward, it might impact the vote. Right. That's my concern. Mm -hmm. Well, I got so Matthew's got. <laughs> Matthew has his hand up, so we'll turn the There was a non-binding vote previously uh, by ballot in the town. Um, the only concern I have, or the, the a concern that I have with, and I apologize, it looks like I have blue lasers coming out of my eyes, and I have no idea why. Um, <laughs> it does. Um, the, uh, the, the concern I would have with the um, ballot language is that the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department does not have any assets and liabilities. The Berlin Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated has assets and liabilities. So when we suggested the ballot language from the merger committee, it was to absorb the fire department, not to absorb the corporation. And I think that was the different differentiating language that we used. Um, in our discussions at some, one of the final meetings, it really boils down to how much, excuse me, how much money is left in the corporation bank account at the end of the process. Everything else becomes a town asset uh, and, a, and a town liability. Um, as far as the process post um, election, um, I believe by us having this vote in November, it sort of sets a pretty nice deadline of July 1 because the budget development process going forward develops the fire department's budget as a department of the town. And so if the fire department can merge or can fully be absorbed by the town prior to that, great. Uh, but, you know, it, it sort of sets that as a, uh, um, a deadline. There was a... Uh, um, I can say a model schedule that we floated around at one point in time that uh, outlined sort of the steps we thought were necessary. The first one being the town has to appoint a fire chief. And through whatever normal HR processes the town already has. And then after that, it, it, it's pretty easy. It, it falls into place as a town department where most of that structure is already built. Uh, around other departments of the town. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Ryan. Okay. Um, so we did have two votes. Um, one, uh, the second vote that uh, Romei is referring to, um, was very bland, and we want and we're seeking legal advice to make sure that that was whether that was binding or not, um, because we don't we want to make sure we cover our basis. Um, so we are unsure at this moment if that's binding. It's good that we're having this discussion tonight because I know in past uh, select boards, some of what had been asked was how um, folks felt, whether it was the corporation or the members, what were they leaning, and that was all part of having the committee as well. But I think a lot of what's been discussed tonight emphasizes how the votes came out. <laughs> And like you said, for the non-binding, it was 15 to 1, and that you're looking at, uh, you know, the binding vote, whether it was a binding vote. So that helps us as a board. Sorry if I'm dense. I, re I apologize. Is there, a, is, is there an entity called the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department? Is that the corporation? Incorporated. Okay. Incorporated. Okay. okay. I didn't. I'm just so yeah. so when you because you just said it doesn't have any assets. Somebody said it doesn't have any assets. Well, <laughs> so how can that, that was that was me, okay. and the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department does not. The Berlin Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated does. I don't want us to get jammed up by a mistake in ballot language. So this should say it just should add Incorporated. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Definitely. Thank you, Matt. Can, can Nick? Oh, sorry, I'm not the chair. <laughs> Nick? I might yeah. respond to your, your question. <clears throat> the Vermont Volunteer Fire Department from Incorporated is the official business name of the fire department. Okay, that's what I was trying to get at. To my knowledge, there is no Berlin Volunteer Fire Department. Okay. Right. There are no two entities. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, I'm in favor, but I don't know. <laughs> um, so just, I think the issue here for the voters becomes one of ambiguity. So I'm a voter in the town of Berlin. I'm going to vote yes for this, for example. I'm expecting the town of Berlin to execute that vote almost instantaneously. I'm not expecting them to do it on the date of their budget because that's not what the vote's telling me. The vote is telling me that the town is being instructed to hereby take over the assets and liabilities of the corporation. Right? And, and you're absolutely right, having been in the fire business, <clears throat> Pardon me, in another town, people do not understand that this is not a town entity, that it's a corporation that sits on the side that provides public safety services for the town. But I think we need to be extremely clear about that, and it speaks to the president's point, mm -hmm. which is if I expect, and other voters expect, that you're going to hit the ground running as a town and you're going to start that process, what is that process? And, and I hate to even say this because I want the fire department to be part of the town. I'm working with another local fire department to try to get them to do the same thing um, because I think it makes ultimate sense from protection, streamlining, uh, potential savings down the road. Um, but that said, it's like, are we ready to do that? If, if, if it falls into the town's lap, is the town ready to execute on that? Mm -hmm. And we've touched on that as a board, and you're absolutely right. It may come down to, depending on the outcome, that instantaneous factor. Right. Should there be a date on there as yeah. of? Yeah. Well, we, as Matt said, you know, the key is floated a timeline, or we have, the committee has floated a timeline, and also a format at which it will follow, follow to make this happen. Whether you start it the day after the vote, whether you try to tie it to the budget, that's a good point. You said start right away. Okay. But but it's it's here. We we have that. I mean, right. So, but I'm just wondering if the vote should say uh, acquire as of a date, as opposed to and being ambiguous amb ambiguous as to when we're acquiring the assets and liabilities. There should be well, a, maybe a date associated with that. So well, when I went through trying to write my own language. It turned into a paragraph <laughs> because you're thinking it's that, really yeah. so that, it's pretty as a lawyer I can see that happening very that's quickly. one thing we want to avoid but also <laughs> I don't know that we want to tie ourselves down to a, a date that if yeah I mean in my mind we're looking at July 1st 20 <laughs> right well I, I was but gonna say. If moving in this process we find that is not doable we're tied up because we had we could say no vote. earlier than J July right. 1 2020 or something. I don't see, or something. It, I don't see it happening before that. Yeah. I mean, right. You'd have to have time. And I also honestly see that you'd see any change in the fire department if it started tomorrow. Right. right. You know, these fellows are still going to, gals are still going to go mm -hmm. and do their thing mm -hmm. uh, because they're members of the fire department, because they want to be. I guess my concern is from a legal perspective that we may need to have some sort of a does it happen right away? This doesn't say either, doesn't say anything. It just says shall, shall it be acquired. It doesn't say it's tomorrow after the vote. It doesn't say it's six months after the vote. It just says nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's arguably not specific well, enough. Well, I, think it, I think it gives us the flexibility. I, you could look at it that way. <laughs> anyway, these two have had yes, their hands Yes, I was going to say Ryan, then Mary Ellen, and then you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I have two quick points. Um, the first being, in your uh, committee meetings, you discussed leaving a certain amount to the fire department as a Kickstarter. Um, I think including it in this might be the way to do that. Otherwise, it would have to be what? another vote. In, in what? You say including it in the vote? In, in the wording, correct. Um, 
Would that be at the discretion of the town, or would it have to be voted on? If it's already in the budget. If it's already been budgeted, wouldn't that be at the discretion of the town or not? Unless well, you... In, well, I think where it says the transition of assets, if you were excluding X amount of money. But I don't think that should be in the... No. The language for the vote, we're going to read a book. Yeah. You know, I, I think if it's already budgeted and it's already... The voters have to vote on a new budget, right? But if it's already Correct. budgeted, I think it's... Isn't it within the discretion? I don't with, know. with us being Four. an external it's entity, it would be no different than the library, right? At that point. It would just be, instead of our $400,000 currently, yeah. it would be... Five thousand or whatever that number be. So I've had some conversations with the uh, town residents about the town taking over the fire department and you know the voting, they coming up to a vote and what what do they need to understand? And they want to know the process. They want to know that throughout this process, once the town takes it over, how does the town you know how are you guys going to do? hiring personnel? How are you going to transition the firefighters you have into the new roles, or are you even going to? Is there going to be a lull where we don't have any covers because we're in a transition time where we have to have mutual aid? So some of the town's members do want to know, what, what is this going to look like? You know, from a safety standpoint and a personnel standpoint. We have scheduled two information meetings, and there's plenty of time to get that out to explain it. And if I understand correctly, <clears throat> you have the corporate side and you have the firefighting side of the fire department. That's sort of, I think, your own language. The corporate side is going to change. The, the firefighting fire side is going to stay the same. In fact, if you're not uh, the president or vice president of the corporation, I don't think you may even notice the difference if you're a firefighter. They're going to, in the whole plan, <clears throat> We're intending to pay the firefighters so it's not completely 100% volunteer because it's a huge job to do for right, even right. for pay, let alone for nothing. I know. And we're going to bring some people in the house, but you can't put that in a ballot question. And that's, I think, where the informational meetings and the front porch forum, and it's what the steering committee and the fire department has been the board to, yeah. you, know, mm -hmm. you know, has talked about. I think it's great information that they brought it forward so that you could present the questions to us so we can be thinking about it. And I think including that information on the fire department's website, the <coughs> town's website, any information that we can put out there so residents will be more informed. Uh, maybe even a place where folks can pose their questions, like what they brought forward well, to I you. Think, I think it's important that they know um, <coughs> credentials or you know how are you going to take from the pool of firefighters you have now versus what the town wants you know are they going to want fire one Wh what do they want what are they going to hire in because if they have a minimum qualification that doesn't fit what we have as a majority of our members you know you immediately are going to lose people right off the bat and then are you down from you know the limited number we have as responders already and now have we just made that number smaller. Hopefully it will make it better. But you know what I'm saying? Right. right. You know, they want to know I don't, I don't even understand half of what you just said, so I obviously need some education. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm. I, and I'm not, I'm not sure where the money would come from, but we did a couple of campaigns, the Planning Commission put together a couple of campaigns for voting to, to be, to inform people. This might be a good option for that, where we worked with the WDEV who made video, you know, made videos. I mean, we did our own for the, we just went out and <laughs> uh, did our own for the local options. Yeah, local and options. Aired out. But just, I, I just think this is something that is so complicated that people, if there's ways to simplify it and give some basic points that people are going to want to know, right. this would be a good. It would. It would be very good information to get out. We'll have to discuss that. And Ryan, and then we'll go to Matt, and then over to you, Janet. <laughs> Um, this kind of goes back to my original question or comment um, with the in respect to the paying the firefighters I think if the board was able to have a an intentions document or some agreed upon document that stated here's what we hope this will look like what and not to corner you in a box or anything but these are right. our, our ideals of what this looks like 
six months after the, the merger, and it, I think that would give everyone <coughs> answers as to like what if, what if this, what if that. Would they, it help to bless whatever document you're talking about if the select board blessed this transition plan or something? Would that? Well, I think it might be ideal. This is just a thought, but maybe coming together as a board to have a separate meeting um, where we brainstorm it, because obviously at the time of the vote, we're going to have questions posed to us, and it'll be sort of like a brainstorming in yeah, advance. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, I, another thing that I think is important during the committee meetings, we had Trip Johnson from Waitsfield and Jeff Coons from Middlesex and Ken Morton from Williston, which is quite a bit bigger than Berlin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every one of those fire chiefs said to us, it's inevitable that this is going to happen here sooner or later. And you will not know half of the questions until you made the transition. Now, that's a bitter pill to swallow. But three people that have been through this as the chief of the fire department told us that. Yeah. And to sit here and beat our heads to the wall that we have to answer every fathomable question that might happen is... is yeah, no, I'm just I'm just suggesting that there's sort of a basic sure. understanding of what the transition plan, and if you already have one, would it make everybody feel better if the select board sort of blessed it? Well, I think we have a timeline. We may not have answered all those questions like uh, okay. how much money or what assets are left or that right, sort Right, but of just thing. a general... Go, oh. I didn't mean to cut you off. I no, no, go ahead. I, you're going to... Sure, the ahead. question I have and pose is a budget question. <clears throat> because if there's a ballot item for November, it, it happens then, or it happens as of July 1st, one way or the other. If the firefighters become employees of the town and there's a payroll involved, who is budgeting for that payroll? And what will that payroll look like? So will the town be budgeting for that payroll? So this fall, and now, is, is getting into budget season. Both sides, department side as well as the town side. And payroll is a, it's a budget number. So I guess part of my question there is, that, that leads to a question as to what does this payroll look like and, and, and who, who's is the town, has the town discussed the payroll and, and, and started the process of budgeting for that so that come November 1st, when the vote happens, the town is prepared with a payroll number? I mean, one way or the other, if, if the town's prepared with a payroll number, great. If the vote says no and the fire department doesn't come to the town, it's taken off the, the town's budget. Well, that, well, that's why this November vote is so important. It gives us the direction. Mm -hmm. See, either we're going to prepare a budget or you're going to prepare a budget. Mm -hmm. Without knowing what the result of this November budget is, it's kind of a moot point until we have some clear guidance which way we're going to go. So the topic tonight the topic tonight is the, ba the ballot language. Okay. And I think we need to focus on that. Once okay. we get it on the ballot, because if we don't get it on the ballot tonight, we're off for another year. T tonight's the deadline to get the ballot. Language. So I think we need to focus on this. There's a lot of questions still to be answered, and, and like you know, Pete just said, we're not going to know these these questions until a year from now. We're, we're in the midst of this, so I think we need to focus our efforts on, on what we need to do tonight. I and, and, I and, that's got, I, and that's got. I appreciate that, Trevor. I have not heard anything about this until any further conversation about this since the last meeting so I had no idea where we were at so I had that this was well, the, well this well no, that's fine but the, you know that was sent out to you over the weekend well I, I, yeah this was but I didn't get an update on what was happening with the merger so I didn't know what what had gone on since we last spoke mm -hmm. so without that I can't vote on this good enough still have three members here and Matt no I'm saying I mean that's why I asked the questions I can vote now I've heard the, I've heard Okay, but last I knew, we, we didn't even have, we weren't even... Right, being informed changes your vote. It does. It's huge. So that's all, that's, I mean, I'm sorry that I dragged this out, but I didn't know what was going on. So. No, it's all good. I think the discussion tonight has been fabulous, and everyone's been able to express the views, and it keeps us all even more informed. Well, that's good. So. That's good, and Matt. Matt, please go. 
So um, I, I would just just reflect that uh, I think Tour stole a little bit of the thunder that tonight is not about all these other questions. It's about what language you put on the ballot in November. Um, there is, and we can rehash these same questions 73 times, 73 more times, and we're not going to come to a real good answer. But there are policies in place within the town of Berlin. I hate Mary Ellen just left because it was answering her question. There are policies already in place in the town of Berlin for hiring, for onboarding, for doing all of, all of those things in a way that is consistent with state and federal law. And that's that's what ends up guiding it at, at, after this vote. I don't uh, support putting dates of any kind in there because I honestly don't think this will drag out to July 1. It's really a matter of signing over assets and the select board appointing a fire chief. Mm -hmm. And then the budget development will still happen within the department, just like we've done before. Right. It's I just a matter of whether it's an article or whether it's a line item in the budget. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So okay. I just, you know, the, 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 the charge of the committee was to say yes or no to do it or not. and if to do it then to come up with some ballot language and i think you have it is there any other discussion before we move forward with asking for a motion on this topic just so we need to add ink to this is dave dead or have his hand dead? i don't think so no mm, no i do no. not believe so david i'm going to ask do you have your hand up david delcor no Okay, thank you. Okay. It was oh, hard to tell. Smell. Are you that's waving at us? It smells cursory. Okay, okay. Cursor. very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, do we have a motion and an adjustment perhaps to the language and with including incorporated to the municipal, Berlin Municipal Fire Department Incorporated? No, Berlin no. Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated. Yes. yes, Berlin Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated. I was reading from the top line. So read, Apologies. read the whole thing. Shall the town of Berlin form a municipal fire department and acquire the assets and liabilities of the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department incorporated into the municipality? And I would add of Berlin. I'll That's make, my suggestion. I will move that. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Or actually, uh, we'll, we'll move forward. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thanks for the explanation. Thank you, everyone, for your views and additions and questions, and for being here to include more information for us. Thank you so much. So now on the agenda, we have the right of way permit for Clark and Town. So we have uh, two separate right of way permits that were previously sent to you by email. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Matt Clark in uh, Northern Basement Systems. Is that correct? Yeah, that's my way, Valeria. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Valeria. I'd like to welcome Clark. you to Berlin. Feel free to come right up to the table. You're yeah. welcome to. And we're excited she, to have you move into Berlin. She's much better than I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're the one on TV. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for being here with us. Absolutely. So um, you're looking, you, you bought a lot on Industrial Lane and we did. looking to move your operations up there. Uh, but in the meantime, you'd like to so we're, start we're stressed uh, for We're stressed for, for uh, space. And uh, we we been down in our space for about eight years. Uh, we're growing. Um, obviously, this weather is very conducive to what we do, so um, we expect to continue to grow. Um, and so we purchased the lot with the intent to build a new facility for our, our business, hopefully for the next 20 years, you know, 30 years. Um, and, but our lot, we're on a one-acre lot in Montpelier, 
I don't know if you're familiar with where we're located, but mm -hmm. Gallison Hill Road. And we just, I mean, we're, we're maxed. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking for right now in the interim of things is to um, do the curb cut, get us uh, some parking to put some trailers and things throughout the winter, especially going through the process with Act 50 and, uh, you know, just the, the building permit process. Um, knowing that's going to take some time, mm -hmm. just looking for some extra space to, to start storing some of our, you know, utility trailers, our box trailers, um, maybe a, a truck or two, if, if we slow down through the winter, which sometimes we do. Mm -hmm. So really, um, we, we've had, the engineer started doing the civil side of things. Um, we have an architect starting to work on the design, so we're taking those steps. I don't know if you got what I handed in for an application, but really was utilizing the, you know, concept drawing of what the engineer put in place to put the curb cut where he believes everything's going to need to go, um, just to gain us some, some extra space, really. Tim, did you have a chance to look at that? So uh, briefly, it's, it's the lot next to. Um, it's in between Sunbelt and uh, Calum. Yeah. 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 Because the address, I think, comes up as Sunbelt. So I was okay. wasn't a hundred percent sure, but um, like, how far away from Sunbelt is the entrance going to be? So the, the way uh, the engineer the have it is actually good. coming off from the Calmont side, yep. um, coming over the exact measurement. I don't. I didn't nail down. Mm -hmm. I figured we'd be about fi at least <laughs> 50 feet away from the property line, coming over, um, and then having about a, a 40 foot curb cut to get in and out is what I roughly took from his drawing. Is what I know. didn't see it there's a culvert in the curb cut i believe there is a ditch line that runs down that side of the road i believe it drains from sunbelt kind of down that way because there's a culvert in between there's a culvert so i just mowed it right. so i actually got a little little way of it yeah. vermont Minis uh vermont mutuals or is it vermont mutual driveway mm -hmm. Yeah, that crosses the road onto your side. So is there a culvert? Because I, I'm not seeing any culvert no. short of from um, Calmont. We have that ditch, basically, which is acting as the property line. And that is the only thing where the culvert empties to. Yeah. So that means all the, the drainage from, from um, Sunbelt kind of comes down that side of the road, I think, to the it so goes right in, it, yeah. And kind of goes down that one. I think that because it all kind of slopes into there. So my only recommendations is that there's a there's a culvert underneath the entrance. Yep. I mean, 18s are minimum, but um, 24 inch would 24. I would, <laughs> I the, go way things are, the way I things would go are going through the water, I'd it's hundred percent agree. Not going to be a bad thing here. So. No, mm -hmm. I mean, makes sense. That would be my recommendations: is to have a, a a drain underneath the driveway for that side, so it doesn't cause any ponding or anything like that. It mm -hmm. has a place to go and keep going to the the drain on the Calmont side. So when I was mowing the other day, I didn't dive in and, and check anything out. There is, there's a, either a sinkhole or um, pretty much it looks like Sunbelt has been previously plowing all their snow there. They take all their snow out of their facility and, and around it. the fence and onto that side of the fence there. I don't know where the property line, if they're onto your property. It would be at this on. point, yeah. Because yeah. um, they, they carry all everything out of that. I mean, it's all fenced in. They got a hundred million things in there. They, Right. They carry it all out and they stack it all the way around the outside of that fence. Yeah. And that's always the way they've done it? As of recently, yeah. In the last two years, they've seen to, but they've also acquired a lot more pieces of equipment in there. So they don't have the space to put their snow and they kind of just right. stick it everywhere. And, you know what I mean? And 
whether you allow them or not to do that, that's up to you. They might have to start hauling their snow. Good out neighbors there. are better than bad neighbors. Yep. So um, if it works, it works. Um, as long as it doesn't interfere or impede what we're looking to do, yeah. uh, I'm not going to have a, I mean, an issue with that. That's things, why right? I say I mean, that you mean, they stack all their snow out there. So that's where the, you yeah. know, when it melts, it runs. Well, that's what I'm wondering if that sinkhole isn't caused by. And, and if you were to stop and take a closer look at that, um, because I'm curious, I, I just, until we got here, I wasn't going to do anything with that. I'm going to look at it and say, okay. Um, but it's probably three feet deep, you mm -hmm. know, and it's mm -hmm. it's probably 30 inches in diameter. So if all their snow is going in, just soaking in here, where's it going, right? Mm -hmm. um, it does seem to me, I haven't shot grade, but where the curb cut's looking does seem to be higher elevation than that low spot. So I'm wondering if it hasn't created its own channel through the soil or something mm -hmm. draining elsewhere, mm -hmm. which is not is, being mowed. It's hard to get it mean. I did mow it. Yeah, it's all mowed down. So mm -hmm. and we're gonna try to start, you know, keeping that yeah. keeping it down mowed. Yeah. So that was that was first step. Um, so excellent, excellent. Any questions you have for us before I open the floor for a motion? Uh, no. I mean, uh, I have a question. A so you're you're, you're looking. You purchased the property, you're yep. going through the permitting, yep. you're looking for the curb cut, we're going to be putting the right culvert in, whatever, whatever, and you're just looking for a gravel driveway to a gravel parking area yep. for a period of time. Yep. Have we ever done this before? I don't know. <laughs> no? I don't but know. If there's no access, you have to have access. You have to have access. Well, that's, all we're, that's all we're discussing tonight. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I okay. assume the state yeah. has to... Do no, so oh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. I believe anything um, under a half an acre of impervious ground doesn't require any type of waste or uh, yeah, stormwater yeah. drainage permit yeah, or anything. Right. Yeah, so that's my understanding. Yeah. Um, so I open the floor for a motion on the right of way curb cut permit. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I will encourage you to talk to the zoning administrator just to make sure. He has. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you needed a permit just to park things there. For the, he said, did he say you did? He it? said I didn't need oh, a permit. Okay. It pretty much it was a curb cut permit, okay. is what I was understanding. Yeah, this um, all came through town. Okay. I just was yeah. wondering because sometimes in the new zoning, there's things that require permits that we didn't used to require permits for. So yeah. I just thought I'd make sure you I, talk to him. No, I appreciate that. I'm, it's better I'm to come and Try to navigate and this the right me. way yeah. the best I can. It's just. We really uh, the the space in our lot yeah. where we're maxed to the no. to the gills, and Understood. before somebody gets hurt, I just am trying to to pre-plan here. So that's sounds wonderful. good. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. being here, Thanks. both of you. Good luck. I will email you the signed permit tomorrow. Okay. Does that work? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Um, so a twenty-four. I, yeah, twenty-four. You said it's going to be a forty foot, so you know what I mean. It's you're probably going to need fifty. You need to. To so make you don't that. have abrupt ends. Right. You kind of slope it down into them and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I mean, there is no, it's flat. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know where a culvert's going to drain unless I bring it into that ditch. Yeah. I mean, I, I've I looked at that pretty solid. I don't know, uh, other than having it open ended pits on either side of that thing, I don't, don't have a clue where that thing will drain to. Truth, truthfully, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if I bring it to the culvert, I'll have to tr to trench that over, and either pipe it into that, or I, I guess that would be my only question for you is is how to put a culvert in there. Where where am I? I'm going to create two holes. Would the state so, get involved with that question? No. no. My only recommendation, I guess, to you guys at that point, um, maybe now that it's mowed, we can see a little better. I can go over and look at it better now that it's mowed and, and see the so lay of land land. a little better. Yep. And then we can determine at that point whether it needs or not need. And then, you know, I mean, if, if you guys are all right with it and Matt's yep. all right with it, that if it needs it, we do it. If we determine it not to, now yep. that it's mowed and you can see the contour of the land That's a little better, right. we can opt out of that. That, that mutual collaboration would be very beneficial. Yeah, I'm happy to meet you up there. And 
Yeah. Have you show me what you see and, and or go uh, over there when it's raining really hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I've already I've already watched where it all kind of tends to go. So um, yeah. wa water is our business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little bit, no, a little bit of water. Yeah, a little, a little bit. So, um, but yeah, if if you wanted me to meet you there, I could do that. Or if you want to just time tomorrow that works better. Morning, afternoon. Morning's always good. I can meet you there first thing if you wanted, or uh, you tell me. I. Well, what's first? Thing. <laughs> well, you're free. My wife's up at four every we morning. Started at six. That's okay. amazing. I, I'm Fire more at the six o'clock range. We started at six, so I can yeah. be over there at six thirty. Yeah, I, I can make that work. Yeah, absolutely. And then we can get it right out of the way, and we can finalize it all up. Yep. Give me a deal. Perfect. Thanks, fabulous. Thank yeah. you both so awesome. much. All right. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Thanks for being here. Yeah. 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 Welcome for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. You, you too. too. Well, we got one more. We got, we got hey, Tim, uh, Brad Towns, uh, Junction Road, or Three Mile Bridge Road, uh, another culvert on his uh, property went across the street. Any concerns with that? Uh, I, That's that trailer. Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head. Is there a size on his culvert? Uh, I don't remember off the I'm sure. I'm not aware of what the size is. Do is it, you folks did, did he re, is he replacing it? Is that what he's doing? It was yeah. washed out from the flood. Yeah. And it was never repaired. Last year's flood. Last year's flood. Um, there's a pretty good little brook that comes down through there. It was a two footer that was in there. I think the two footer is okay for size. I just the culvert had, over the years, come up out of the ground. I mean, Brad owned the property, but there was a tenant, and they were responsible for the upkeep, and that was never in the culvert surfaced, and then it got washed out. So, so basically, he's a complete. Yeah, he's gonna. I yeah, the culvert's no good. He had us. You know, I mean, it, it created another. It was another problem this year during July's flood because that end of the town was the one that got the little bit of the evidence from the this year's July flood and um, more gravel come down out of the woods there and the culvert was half in half working but we had got it working last summer so it wasn't a problem with our road so that um, and he ended up having us tear it out this year and, and ditch it across the driveway because there was no there was no use of the property so for the for the time being of this year this summer was we just took culvert out and the stream ran through yep. the driveway and then he was going to do what he's doing now is, is get a permit and redo the driveway and, mm -hmm. and fix it back up so i would assume he's going to stick with the same size and i believe it's a 24 that's that was in there do I hear a motion on the floor for the approval of the permit, the right-of-way permit for town? So moved. Second. 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 Okay. We've got Carla's motion and your second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And thank you, Tim. All right. Thanks, Tom. Have a good you too. Thank you so good much. Job, See you. Thank you. Very much. Okay, we'll move on now to the FEMA buyout applications for the River Run Manor and Berlin Cedar Drive mobile home parks. So, uh, like several of the properties were in the process with uh, the FEMA buyout, uh, the owner of these two properties has approached the town and VEM to participate in the buyout process. Um, so this is the first step in that process. And I uh, told Randy, just like all the other ones, um, you know, this does not um, commit the seller to um, follow through at this time. It's just, you know, going through the process and he can back out at any time. So mm -hmm. I move to accept both of these projects into the program. Do I hear a second. second? Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion carries. And then we have, I've also, today I've not talked to him, but we received another inquiry um, for another pro property possibly to participate in this. Do you want to discuss that at this time? Uh, not yet. I haven't had a chance to talk to the owner yet. Very well. We can be aware. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So now we will move forward to the property reappraisal. Um, previously, you know, we learned that our common level appraisal was 72% and our coefficient of dispersion is 19.2%. Uh, inquired of the state of any actions we need to take yet and uh, they advised today that uh, recent change they only look at the coefficient of dispersion of being 20 percent or more mm. so we are just under that level right now but very likely in the future will exceed that and have to do with the reappraisal so there's no action to take at this time mm -hmm. but we are so close so close yes so and then we talked about this uh, a while back anyway last mm -hmm. time we did an appraisal we there's like a waiting list for this to happen is this the time to think about getting on that list are we on that list or do we wait for that? I think I think we should wait until um, we're ordered by the state to do it. But um, it wouldn't hurt to you know prepare a draft RFP and stuff so we can be about ninety five percent ready to hit the ground running when we do get that mm -hmm. I think notice that was from the wise. state. Great. So no action needed on right. this, but thank you so much for updating us to her on that. Good information. So now we'll move to the meeting date, the first meeting in September. So our traditional first meeting in September is on the Labor Day holiday, uh, which would be Monday, September 2nd. So do we want to reschedule it? If we rescheduled it that week, I could do it the Tuesday night, but not the Tuesday. remainder of the week. Tuesday the 3rd? Mm -hmm. That's myself, but is that works for everyone else. Know? Or are you on the second Tuesday? I can never see TRB is the 1st and 3rd. 1st and 3rd. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. So what about the 2nd? Unless we the did it. Monday. Oh, you can't come before 5, right? I mean, you can't come before 6, right? No, I wouldn't be able to come before 6, but that Tuesday would be the only time that I could that week. Your DRB doesn't start till 7. Right, right. right. That's what I was thinking if we did, early, you know, 5 30. I could make that work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would With work. approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 5 30. That work for you, Joe? The third. Are you away? That's that a week? big fire department. That's night. a fire department night. Oh. That's why I was saying, yeah, how about the ninth of next month? Right. What if we do it the Monday following? No, so we got public works for that night. Good point, yeah. What time do you go to, the, do you start early at the fire department? 6.30. I mean, I don't mind doing it Monday, but I have no plans, so. <laughs> I, mean, I have no problem doing it Monday <laughs> myself, but I have no life. Oh, yeah, well, I don't have much of one. <laughs> I could do it Monday night as well, as long as everyone else could. But I can also do Tuesday night, and we could limit the agenda for that one particular night, given it's a holiday week, um, and you know, get it done quickly if your meeting is at 6.30 and yours is at 7. So those are just some options. I'm good with whatever you decide. I'll make it work. Same here. Do you care if we do it Monday? No. Maybe we should just do it Monday. Mm -hmm. So trying to rush Monday? through Tuesday. Okay. I say keep it on the Monday, as long as Brad's not opposed to that for any reason. That's great. Okay, so now we'll move. We get paid overtime for that one, don't we? That's <laughs> right. That was a double time and a half. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> and so now we'll move on to the approval of well, let's the. Let's do the uh, fireworks permit. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. You did say that you had that to add. Thank you. Lots happened since you said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we are. So, did you want to go over it? Sure. Or I can go over it. So anyway, um, so the fire, fireworks permits come through 
the fire department, not necessarily coming to um, the town as a special event permit, mm -hmm. if you yeah. want to call it. Um, this is not, it's not open to the public. It is open to the public if we're talking about um, a neighborhood. So this is Dodge Farm Road. There's an individual up on Dodge Farm Road looking to have um, a neighborhood picnic. And he then inquired about fireworks permit and being the proximity uh, of the airport led me to now open up communications with the state to see what their thoughts were on this because uh, I was, that was, uh, that was going to be a big no for me, uh, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't that big of a deal for the state. So I believe in the, the permit, you have the permit with the conditions which are written on there giving you some of the communication between myself and um, the state as far as uh, them being okay with having that permit. You do have uh, a Google Earth shot of where the runway is versus where the property owner is. Um, and that, that was all given to the state and they, they approved it just the same. So, now, this was kind of a, a I'm going to say a high profile for fireworks. Typically, they're, they're family or a you know, gathering if it's a, a wedding or whatever. Um, I was just talking with Tour, thinking these fireworks permits should probably actually be coming through the town. And if nothing else, letting some people be aware of, um, I'm going to say PD, be aware of fireworks being in the area. Um, just in case they get a call. Um, and some of those conditions are, are very typical for um, displays. The, the, last, the last one, due to the proximity of Knapp Airport fireworks, can only be displayed between the hours of 9, 8, 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. So they, they are well, they are setting up to uh, push that information out to any of the um, area pilots, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Through the FAA. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So they can't shoot before and they can't shoot after. Excellent. Hmm. And that included the, the special event ordinance. Um, I think if you look at section 31. Mm -hmm. One definition. Um, big thing there is use by the general public of public property or public rights of way within the vicinity of the event. So if this is on their private property, I don't think the special event permit applies and we're just talking about the fireworks permit on its own. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like to me. The other would be a moot point. So do I hear a motion to accept the municipal fireworks display permit as presented to us this evening? So moved. Oh. I'm sorry. Any discussion? Need a second. Um, a second first and then we'll open it up for discussion. You I moved. moved. Okay, second. Okay. So I guess my question is, so you said it's on Dodge Farm Road? It is. I mean, maybe this is too technical, but do we own the road now? Yes. So the public rights of way? It's it's close. It's. But it's not in the right, I mean, does, I mean I'm just wondering what the, does it have to be literally in the right of way or can it affect the right of way? <coughs> well, I, I think there's lots of things that can uh, contribute here as far as wind direction and speed and bringing any, any of the fallout okay into the town right away okay well let's, we don't have to worry about that for tonight it was just a question because i was just curious i thought i thought we had taken it over and that officially taken the road and that was yeah i mean right. if this was yeah. if this was private right we wouldn't have any much i don't to think say we would have this, have a discussion <laughs> yeah but being that yeah i mean it is a town town yeah. road yeah well they're still supposed to get a permit for fireworks Yes, you mean the special event wouldn't be a discussion? Right. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 
Okay. All those in favor of the municipal fireworks display permit? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. And now we'll move to the licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, warrants, approval. Oh, is that me? Yes, please. Uh, I make the motion to pay payroll warrant 25-03 for the pay for payroll from July 28th, 2024 to August 10th, 2024 to be paid on August 14th, 2024 in the amount of $66,249.73 to include pay payable warrant 25G3 with check number 24134 to 24214 in the amount of $88,741.85. And you want something with journal entries as well? Yes. Yeah. Journal entries from July, Ju uh, June, and July. Sorry. Do we hear a second? Second. Can I just ask, did you say to be paid on August 10th or August 14th? Yes. August 14th. We're already past August 14th. Correct. But we still have to approve the... Mm -hmm. Oh, so... Mm -hmm. So we're approving back to that date. Okay, but I thought it said to be paid on August 14th. To be paid on. It does say that. And so the checks are most likely dated for that date. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, so, I didn't notice that before. Is it always like that? Yeah. So the checks oh, are okay. actually dated August 19th. And we will be approving it tonight and then signing off okay. on them. And they're all here um, yep, yep. for review if needed. Okay, sorry. No, that's quite all right. Good question. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. And now we'll move to the approval of the minutes for 71524. Actually, we only have one set, and that is August 8th. Okay, so there were three listed, but we only have the set for August 8th, 24. Correct. So I'll open up for a motion on those minutes. And okay. again, that's for August 8th of 2024. I'll move to approve the minutes of August 8th of 2024. Thank you, Carla. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And now we'll turn to roundtable. I know we're a little past our timeline, but Joe? I think we covered what I thought I was going to be doing at roundtable. Okay. Very so. well. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Carla? No, I've talked enough. <laughs> Tour? No. And I don't have anything either this evening for roundtable. Um, do we expect an executive executive session? Yes. Okay. I move in to enter into the executive session for personnel in accordance with 1 VSA 313A3 and no decisions expected. Do we hear a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 